So what's the issue with sarcoidosis and vitamin D? So we hear this a lot that um, some practitioners tell people, hey, take vitamin D. And some practitioners tell people, no, stay away from vitamin D. So sarcoidosis is a granuloma type of inflammation. And that is a process where you get immune cell activation and then it makes uh, these, these lesions called granulomas. So granulomas actually have a high amount of that enzyme that activates the final form of vitamin D. And so you can get hypercalcemia, you know, high calcium levels. And that's what you worry about because too high calcium levels can cause some problems. And too high calcium combined with inflammation can lead to plaque buildup in the arteries. It can lead to kidney stones. It can also lead to impairment in, in heart function and brain function. So that's what you worry about is that you get elevated urinary calcium, which is a, a risk factor for kidney stones or blood calcium level, which is what we talked about. So the data shows that between 3.7 and 7.4% of sarcoidosis patients are at risk for hypercalcemia or develop hyper, hypercalcemia. So it kind of, it varies between the studies. So vitamin D is essential. We know we need vitamin D. It does a lot of great things in the body. One of the things I didn't mention in actions is vitamin D is responsible for the expression of over 200 different genes. And that's that hormone power that I talked about. These hormones are so very powerful. And that's why vitamin D is a misnomer, unfortunately. It should have been called hormone D. Because when people say vitamins, they're kind of like, eh, whatever. But when you say hormones, everybody's like, what'd you say? It piques their attention. So when you think about vitamin D, think about hormone D. Okay, so what's the recommendation for sarcoidosis patients? Well, the first thing is measure. And so one of the great things about vitamin D is that we can measure it. And so usually we measure this 25 hydroxy or 25 OH vitamin D. So when you check your lab work and you see vitamin D, that's usually the type that we measure. And the reason for that is it's our major uh, carrier form of vitamin D in the blood. So it's, it's a good approximation of overall vitamin D stores. But as we talked about a granulomatous disease like sarcoidosis, you get increased amounts of the final enzyme that makes the active the 125 version of vitamin D. So what a lot of us will recommend and what the research shows is the best way if you have sarcoidosis to uh, check your vitamin D stores is to measure the 25 OH version and the 125 OH version. Measure both of these because that lets you know, hey, it's the major storage form, the 25 is, is that low or are we converting too much to the active form? What's happening there? But another thing that you can do and something that's not done commonly is measure something called PTH or parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone's main job is to help the body regulate calcium levels. Calcium is a very powerful messenger in the body. And so our body really likes to keep calcium levels regulated. And so if your parathyroid hormone is elevated, then that usually indicates that you have a vitamin D deficiency. And it's usually not gonna be elevated to the range, like outside the normal range. It'll usually be on the high end of the normal range. So that's about 30 to about 50, depending on, you know, above 30 usually, that's the, that's the standard that we say, okay, that's the higher end of normal. And this could indicate that there's a vitamin D deficiency. So normally your 25 OH vitamin D should be between 35 and 50. If it's above 60, you can run into some risks of, of hypercalcemia and some issues with uh, calcium metabolism. So if you're checking, you can check the, the 125, you can check the 25, you can check your PTH, and you can use all of these to see, hey, do I really have a vitamin D deficiency? Because let's say your 25 is um, a little bit low, but your 125 is okay and your PTH is okay, you probably don't have a vitamin D deficiency. 
And then as, as well as you can check your calcium levels to see what your calcium is doing. And then you can check urinary calcium as well to see how much calcium you're excreting. So the name of the game in holistic medicine is get as much data about your body as I possibly can. Because the more data I get, the better recommendation, the better prediction I can make. So vitamin D is fat soluble. And that's a, a key thing when you're taking vitamin D is you have to take it with some fat. So one of the main issues of this whole uh, fat is bad craze, which is not, there's essential fats, there's uh, essential proteins, there's no essential carbohydrates. So one of the things that's happened is we've created a shortage of the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. So um, that I usually take my vitamin D with uh, fish oil or I take it with some fat. So the dosing. This is the question. So when your practitioner tells you to take some vitamin D, we're not talking about the mega doses and mega doses is like 50,000 units a week, or we're not even talking about 10,000 units a week. What the data shows is you want to stay below a thousand international units daily. Some studies even recommend lower than that 200 to 400 international units daily. Then that's if we check all those labs we talked about to make, and it shows that you have a, a low vitamin D. And what you also want to do is if you are shown to have a low vitamin D, you want to take a look at vitamin A and K2 as well. So there's really good evidence that the fat soluble vitamins work in concert. They, they all work together. They're a crew, you know, and, and a, a crew is stronger when all members of the crew are present. So if the other fat soluble vitamins aren't there, vitamin D can kind of get all crazy and start acting out on its own. And the other guys are like, Hey bro, come on, man. Come on, come on. You don't want to do that. Come on back. Come on back. That's what the other fat soluble vitamins do. So a lot of times I'll recommend that you that we take vitamin A, vitamin K2, and vitamin D together. Now the adverse effects of too much vitamin D, how do we know if we're, if we're too high on vitamin D? You start to see that blood calcium creep up and the body will react to that by excreting more calcium in the urine. And so those are ways that you can check to see if your calcium level is starting to creep up too high. Another thing that can happen is because calcium and phosphorus bind together and their metabolism is linked to vitamin D is that your phosphorus level will start to um, actually decrease because you'll start to excrete more phosphorus so that it doesn't bind up calcium so that you can get phosphorus out of it. So these are the ways that you can actually measure. So the key take home here, and I know there was a lot of questions about vitamin D in the sarcoidosis community, is low dosing, don't do mega dosing, and really get as much data about your vitamin D pathway as you can from your provider so you can make an accurate assessment of your true vitamin D status.